Okay, uh, so we're going to move to our uh, next oral presentation. Uh, so the title is a Dataset Perspective on, on Offline Reinforcement Learning. And I'm probably going to butcher your name, but it's uh, Kaitan Schweikhofer. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> okay. So, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, today, I will give you a data set perspective on offline reinforcement learning. Okay. Yes. So, uh, the question we try to answer, or we try to um, investigate with our paper on a very high level view, is which kind of locked experience is actually suitable to learn good behavior from? But before going into the details, let me introduce the problem setting. We all know in reinforcement learning, we have an agent represented by a policy interacting with the environment. Uh, and we uh, usually use these sample interactions uh, to further improve the policy. The good thing about this setting is that we have corrective feedback. And if the policy learns something bad, uh, we can hope to recover from that. But uh, interaction with the environment is potentially dangerous if you think of um, settings like uh, pricing or healthcare. And it is also usually slow if you don't have a high throughput simulator. So uh, people investigated a lot into offline or batch reinforcement learning lately, uh, which is rather different because we don't allow interaction with the environment, but assume to have a fixed data set given beforehand. Uh, the good thing about it is we can leverage this usually safely collected uh, trajectories from human operators or a safe baseline and uh, use this to uh, train a good policy. The problem in the setting is that we don't have corrective feedback with the environment and uh, this leads to some challenges, uh, namely distribution shifts and iterative error amplification. So a lot of work has been done to ameliorate those challenges, uh, but mostly on the algorithmic side. Uh, what we are trying to investigate is what is the influence of the different data set distribution on, on this issue. Uh, to give an example for that, um, in this uh, plot here, we trained uh, several algorithms applicable to the setting on three different data sets from the same environment. And as you can see, uh, we used a random policy, an expert policy, and a policy that was used epsilon greedy to sample the data sets. Uh, one of these algorithms, the orange one, behavior value estimation worked really good on the random data set compared to the other algorithms, but uh, was not very good on the expert data set. When we now switch to the noisy expert, it was suddenly the best algorithm, uh, which is kind of, kind of um, strange actually. Yeah? Um, so it was not clear how changing the data, uh, how um, algorithms perform if we change the data distribution. Towards that end, uh, we, um, try to investigate uh, how the data sets characteristics um, influence algorithms in the offline reinforcement learning setting. Okay, uh, the first question to ask is how to characterize a reinforcement learning data set. Obviously, we could do that through visual inspection of the behavior or through visualization techniques, um, but that's like very limited and only qualitative. Um, more optimal would be to have some quantitative measures uh, such as uh, the episode length or the um, entropy of the action distribution, but it's not clear uh, which ones to choose and which ones uh, like give insights into which algorithms work and which don't. Um, what we tried to do is to kind of characterize the attributes of the behavioral policy that was used to sample data set, uh, which is known like we, we took the road of uh, using the well known exploitation versus exploration trade off to get some measures. Um, finding a measure of exploitation is rather simple um, because we know the expected return already uh, tells us how much the policy uh, exploits the environment. Uh, empirically, we can estimate it using the average return. And as we assume to have multiple data sets on the same environment, uh, we can just normalize through them, which we call the Jack Reese quality. A measure of exploration is rather difficult to find because there are many ways or multiple ways one could uh, define exploration because it has to serve some purpose. Uh, such purposes could be uh, getting information on how to, like on an optimal world model or um, sampling trajectories that are maximally distant under some distance measure. 
uh, what we did is uh, using the entropy of the uh, transition probabilities. That's how, um, how let's say, um, how diverse uh, kind of the uh, trajectories are or the, the uh, transitions are that we sample from uh, with the behavioral policy. Uh, we um, we uh, like uh, restricted ourselves to deterministic MDPs, uh, which is why the um, transition entropy simplifies to the occupancy entropy, as it does. Like if I'm in, I'm in a state and do an action, I always come to the next state. Therefore, I can drop the dependence on the reward on the state. Uh, empirically, we could estimate it using an uh, entropy estimator, but the question remains whether having uh, a state action pair more than once in the data set does make any difference to the learning algorithm, because we could just sample non-uniformly uh, for uh, the same effect, so to say. Therefore, we have chosen to use the uh, upper bound on this entropy estimator, which is just a, a number of unique state action pairs, uh, to get an empirical estimator. And same as before, we normalize with some reference data sets, which we call the, the measure we get from that is uh, the state action coverage. Okay, uh, now that we have some tools to um, characterize data sets, um, we also need to generate ones. Um, we used five different schemes that are uh, utilized more, most frequently throughout the offline reinforcement learning literature, uh, which is uh, sampling a data set using a random policy sampling it with a mixture of different policies, a random and an expert in our case, uh, using the full repeat buffer, which is usually obtained by uh, draining in an online setting and uh, storing, sorry, storing the full repeat buffer. Um, and the uh, final ones are the, the um, fully trained expert agent, sampled greedy and epsilon greedy. So in the bottom row, you can see the visualizations of the selection space distributions of these different data sets. And as one would guess for this uh, simple mountain car environment, um, the random uh, policy is quite centered around uh, the valley, whereas the expert data set is very uh, committed to this optimal trajectory of swinging up and down and getting out of the valley. Uh, using our two, uh, two, uh, two measures, uh, trajectory quality and state action coverage, we can see that uh, these uh, data sets, uh, like, the, the position of data sets relates to what we think it should be. Like the random data set has the lowest quality, whereas the expert one has the highest, all others are in the middle, whereas the Ripley and noisy data set have the highest um, coverage of the, of the selection space. Okay, uh, in total for our experiments, we used uh, six environments, uh, classic control, mini grid, and minotaur environments to have a diverse set of dynamics, state, and action spaces. Okay, uh, so now we have uh, data sets and uh, can uh, characterize them. What we finally need is some uh, methods to evaluate on. And these methods can be uh, like divided into three categories roughly. Ones are the baseline methods, which, kind, uh, which try to approximate the behavioral policy in some sense. Uh, the unconstrained of policy algorithms that try to approximate the optimal policy. These are basically variants of Q-learning and data set constraint of policy algorithms that try to find the optimal policy while staying kind of constrained to what we know from the data set. Uh, so in this main results plot, we can see uh, in each of the subplots uh, the results for the respective method. So the, the data points in there are shared across um, subplots because they uh, represent the same data sets. Uh, characterized by the trajectory quality and selection coverage and the color of points indicate the performance where lighter means higher performance. As we can see, behavioral cloning, as we would expect, has a perfect correlation basically with the trajectory part of the data set because the better the behavioral policy, uh, the better the policy we can learn from it. For the um, unconstrained of policy algorithms, we see that having high selection coverage is beneficial because if we don't know much about the environment, we are prone to making errors uh, in counterfactuals to say what would happen if we would do that. And finally, we see that the data set constraint of policy algorithms uh, kind of interpolate between those two extremes. So uh, if there is not much information, like not much coverage of the state action space, uh, but high quality trajectories in my uh, buffer, they basically do behavioral cloning. While if there is, um, uh, more coverage of this detection space. Uh, they try to improve upon a simple cloning of the policy and yeah. 
Okay, uh, so what is future work in this, in this direction? Um, we would like to investigate the effects of uh, the data sets distribution on model-based uh, algorithms, because it's not clear whether like learning a policy and learning a model uh, has the same like necessities on the data distribution. Uh, furthermore, um, it could be interesting to have a different measure of exploration, um, yeah, have a different measure of exploration, and um, it would be interesting to investigate failure modes of our current of policy algorithms um, from a data set perspective, because we have this replay buffer and we know that uh, after some time it can be uh, unstable, which could be related to uh, the current distribution of the replay buffer. Okay, um, in the end, uh, like one thing that's very obvious but easily forgotten is um, that data set composition matters a lot, even more so in offline reinforcement learning. Uh, and if we compare new algorithms, we, uh, it's maybe not good to use the average performance of multiple data sets, but look into, um, because uh, some algorithms could uh, be better on a certain distribution than on others. Uh, finally, we hope the community finds it useful to characterize reinforcement learning data sets using our R measures or some variants of them. That's it from my side. I'm looking forward to your questions now. Please. <laughs> what about the case where you don't like an industrial application where you have a data file and you have really no characterization of the data policy that generated data? Yes. So uh Okay, uh, what about a setting where we have just a fixed data set, like in an industrial setting, and we can't control the data, basically? Yeah? Well, uh, obviously, you just try. Yeah? <laughs> uh, the question arises if you, for instance, would have multiple processes that could yield you more data, yeah? uh, multiple safe processes, like how, which, which one to choose from that? Yeah? How to get uh, new data to um, get better results with your existing algorithms? I hope that answers the question. Thanks. Okay. Let's, 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 let's.